I'm guessing up here is the end all that ends all. Or maybe not. I, they still want me to walk around a bit, it would seem. Is there like a map or something? Nope. All right. We're just kind of have to figure this out. These poor skulls didn't stand a chance. Nope, they did not. All right. Blood trail leads that way. Ah, out of curiosity, where's the trail that doesn't have a blood trail? Well, back to the embankment sewers. Oh, I think I know where I am. This door was locked before and I couldn't get through. Oh, yeah, I know exactly where I am, actually. All right. Well, then. Let's go face Harriet, I suppose. wonder if old Bridget is still alive. Probably not. Oh, there's Harriet. Hey, girl. You don't look too good. Oh, I'm sick. So sick. Doctor, help me, please. I'm in such pain. I'll be glad to be of assistance. Ah, oh, like your help, Doris. Liars! All of you. In fairness, you're the one who asked for help. Oh, my poor baby. I've been such a bad mother. Since when do you the queen care? Self forgave me. Gave me another chance. Harriet, you must stop all of this. I can't let you infect anyone else. How dare you interfere with the Red Queen's plans, Doctor? How can you stop the course of nature? Blech. Please tell me we could just fight her. We don't have to do another dialogue. Okay, good. We could just fight her. I've been alone all my life. Please, people at the Pembroke Hospital were helping you even though you were a massive jerk to all of them. You were just someone who's like, oh, woe is me. My life is terrible. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you just, you never made an effort to be nice to someone. You reap what you sow. Try to be a decent person. Not to everyone. You don't have to be. Some people. Okay, this was too easy. There's something very wrong here. I I'm not going near her when she's like that. Yep, oh, yep, you see? Uh. Is this a dream? What? Oh, how infinitely, how intensely, how irredeemably are you all going to suffer now? Okay, we found our vampire mommy, Red Queen. Though I think she's more like our vampire Grammy, which is what I'm gonna call her. All right, vampire Grammy. Okay, you know what? Maybe not. Back, 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 back. All right, let's try. This. There we go. Little. All right, I don't think I can stagger her. I won't be able to get extra blood out of her if that's the case. I'll have to be extra careful. Eat, for this is my body. Did she just summon more vampires? Yes, did. Oh, she summoned blood. I wonder if I can use their blood. Uh oh. What? 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 She has sickle. I will me more. They are run so down the guns. Okay, that's just a bunch of dialogue talking all over itself. I don't know what what to take from that. But I'm just following her because you know what? Just get down from there. Back off a bit. Will you just die? Back, 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 back. I've almost got this recharge. Yes. Okay, right, I can't see her, but I think I got her. Yes, I got her. A little staggered by it, but. Oh good, we almost got her dead! The Red Queen's almost done for! Gosh, she's only level 30, I just noticed. The people I fought on the streets were like 35. They even fought a 40, I believe. Oh, you also have more. No one could ever defeat you, mother of us all. For you are our every root and leaf. You've always been my most amusing son. What then go is back going to on? Thief, my queen. And smile at us from your dreams. Did they feel my wrath? Have they suffered enough? More than sure. ever, mother of us all. Until the next time. Until the next time. Bye, Grandma. This vampire family is just very effed up. So 
it's over then, young Ekon. Oh, old Bridget, that you? You have put an end to this terrible menace. Old Bridget? What are you doing here? This is my realm, Ekon. This is Suaskal territory. But they were all massacred by the monstrosity that Harriet became. Others will come, engendered by deceitful vampires. I don't mean you, of course. Does that mean we could still be friends? I thought you'd been slaughtered with all the other sewer scars. I was up above, in search of help when Harriet suddenly turned into that thing. I have no idea what it was. It's over now. London is no longer shrouded in the disaster's shadow. We're all safe. Yes. You prevailed in the end. I hope you'll forgive me for the way I treated you when first you presented yourself at our gate. No, no it was fine. I had worse receptions. Really? Perhaps there will be no stories told or songs sung of what happened here today. But I'll know the truth. Jonathan Reed. Newborn vampire stepped forward and saved us all. I'm honored to be part of this city's legend. Thank you, old Bridget. May I ask you just one question? How could I refuse you anything now? I'll answer just as I answered Lady Ashbury. Where is she? Met a few nights ago. Who are you? Really? I was born with the name Bridget Eleanor Wellington. In 1738, my beloved and immortal husband decided to preserve my beauty and youth forever by making me drink his blood. You were Lord Redgrave's wife. Wait, what? Then the pompous fool rejected you, did he not? It was about 200 years ago. Well, that explains why he didn't kill you afterwards. Peace found me in time. And I sincerely hope it will find you too. Now that all is over. No, it's not over. I may have ended the vampire epidemic, but I still need answers from the woman I love. I feared you would say that. Go then, young Ekon, and face your fate. Just remember that I'll always be here for you. Thanks, old Bridget. You're my best friend. All right, we're not done yet, folks. We we gotta London find Lady Ashbury. This catastrophe came about when an ancient malignant will crossed paths with mortal imprudence. For now, we are safe. For now, my craving for blood remains. Red like hate, red like hunger, red as life and death, passing from one immortal to another, from predator to victim, patiently biding its time to rise again. London has been cleansed for now, but there's a simmering hatred, fear, and old grudges. When will we succumb, mortals and immortals alike? The next disaster is only a matter of time. My only hope now is to catch the woman I love, to understand why she fled, and unmask the secret that has been lurking in her blood for so long. I guess she just freaked out that her blood makes eye core. She itches are she gave her blood to other people. Oh, is this did she say like she had a home in Scotland or something? Is this it? Oh, it's the thing in her painting when we saw her in her mansion all that time ago. At least I think it is. Also, I hear a car. Oh hey, a red car! I remember seeing that in the city streets. I didn't know we could drive. Would have made our life so much easier if we did that in the first place, huh? Well, this is it. Lady Ashbury's Domain. Why am I not surprised it's not on any maps? I'd better hurry. Ah, no, I don't think we need to hurry. We can read our mission update. The disaster has been averted and the Red Queen slumbers once more. My part is done and it's time to, for me to go. Elizabeth, my love, I am coming for you and your truce. I pray to all the forgotten gods and fallen saints. I beg before all fading suns in the graveyard of stars that you will be there for me. 
Uh, they're probably gonna kill her, aren't they? The game. They just, they want to hammer home the sadness that I am a lonely immortal that no one loves, huh? Oh, well. I want to say at least I have my mom, but she won't be around much longer. Chances are she's already dead. You know, from old age and whatnot. What? Ah, vampire daddy again? You know what? No. Not my daddy. Not at all. You are just vampire to me now. You're just, you're not even a good dad. Beautiful morn, my child. It looks like Dawn is here, at long last. Can't you just leave me alone? Your precious queen has been sent back to the bottomless pit from whence she came. The nightmare is almost over. I am here to say goodbye. The sun's warmth exhausts me. Soon I will rejoin my queen in her endless sleep. It is over. You did well. Oh, we can ask her questions. Or him questions. Can I... What is the Red Queen necessary? I still don't fully get that. So our beloved mother will just go back to sleep. Now that enough people have suffered. Is that it? No, Jonathan. The Morrigan has been appeased because you dared confront her. You have prevailed, my bittersweet champion. So she's willing to go to sleep because we were willing to fight her, really? Oh wait, it says there's a name noun to this. Mardin. Mardin. Oh yeah, I think he mentioned that. Yep, you know, screw it. I'm googling that name right now. Mardin Wilt. Uh, let's see. He's from a Welsh legend. Oh, he's like another version of Merlin, essentially, from what I can gather from this quick Google search. I could be horribly wrong. I'm too lazy to keep reading more about this. So, God, making me keep on talking with things that were already kind of hinted at and explained. What are you to her? You said that she was your mother. And what are you to her? Her counterpart? Her opponent in some timeless game? She is my mother. My dreadful and sour-tempered mother. She is yours too, in a way. But you are not born from her terrible womb like me. You are but a distant child. Doesn't that make me a grandchild? God, what does she seek? She clearly just wants pain and suffering to humanity. What does she seek? Revenge? Retribution? She seeks nothing, since she only dreams of it. In the ancient tongue, when I was young, her name meant Ghostly Queen. Pray she never fully awakens, for her wrath knows no bounds. Yep, you know what? Figured that. Might as well finish up all the stuff. Disaster. Why did Harriet Jones become a disaster? You are the doctor. You hold the knowledge needed to answer such a question. Have you the answer? Well, you're the ethereal vampire. Why can't you tell me? Are all Icors women? Is that it? I noticed that all the Icors were female. As if a male couldn't endure the metamorphosis. Harriet was also a bitter and resentful woman, as was her daughter. If the Morrigan prefers despoiled women to become the vessels of her wrath, we should be thankful that but one disaster hath been cast upon this wobbling world. Alright, so just the queen identifies with women who are angry. Pure and simple. Uh, can you catch an Icor? Like a virus? Icors seem to carry various diseases. They did not merely turn people into skulls. Their presence alone spreads death. Who knows whether the Red Queen awakens when cursed mortals endure such epidemics, or if the contagions emerge like a curse as she awakes. That is so confusing, man. I don't even want to bother distinguishing what you're saying anymore. This is not over, though. This is not over. I am here to find the true origin of the blood of hate. Tis unwise to interfere with a tale rooted so deeply in the suffering of others. Ah, oh, there's still more dialogue, really? Alright, I'm gonna go through all of it. What will happen to Ascalon? What will happen to Ascalon? Will you let them run the country from the shadows? I don't interfere with petty political intrigues. Ascalon was built upon the lie of a lineage. Such a deceit cannot last forever. 
Yep, I was but right. Lord he was a liar. Definitely possessed Marshall's blood. Untainted blood from the greatest vampire knight. Really? I wonder how he managed to acquire it. Perhaps I should retrieve this artifact before going back to sleep. Yeah, go. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Uh, guard a pre-win. What will become of the vampire hunters? They will never stop searching for William Marshall, for he escaped their two great hunts. Remember that you too are now on their dark list. So you are not William Marshall, though. You're something else entirely. Uh, Brotherhood. What will be become of the Brotherhood? I foresee trouble for them now that your progeny considers becoming the new primate. But I'm certain the current primate has no wish to resign. Exactly. And I am not fully convinced your progeny truly understands what dreadful power he is about to defy. Yeah, it was a bad idea to turn Swansea into a vampire. Can we stop talking? I want to see Elizabeth. No. I must know why Elizabeth fled here when I discovered she was the original healthy carrier. No, she is not what you say she is. That is a secret you will discover soon enough. And you? Why are you here? Which new thread of which old twisted plan are you seeking to pull now? Tell me the truth. I am just here to salute my sons and to bid them fare thee well. Then go. I'm tired of talking Your to you. Your sons? Plural. My god, will you ever stop speaking in riddles? Just let him go to sleep. For your spoken language. Perhaps you now have so many subtle words you no longer hear the simplest ones. Oh my god! This game is ridiculous with all its stupid dialogues. This is why I gave up on talking to people. I don't even know how I managed to last so long talking to others. It's too much. I'm gonna go through all of them though. Because replaying this game would be a bitch. Tell me about William Marshall's blood. Tell me about William Marshall. Why is his blood so strong? He is not stronger than you, only older. You are strong, Jonathan Reed. A champion of your time, chosen to defeat a threat spawn of this generation. Is that all? No, there's still more. I'm is just gonna click here? each one. Is William Marshall here? Is that why you're here now, too? Have I not already answered that question? No. You haven't. You barely answered any of my questions. Blood... It was his blood tainted? His why blood are we asking him this? The blood Lord Redgrave possessed. That which I used in the serum. But what if it had been? Then you would have failed, I suppose. For the blood of hate would have corrupted you, too. What, what was the point of even making that dialogue? Serum made by King Arthur's blood, who may I put in again, was a fictional character. When he fought me, Geoffrey McCullum used a serum made of King Arthur's blood. Since then, I have discovered that it was vampire blood. Whose blood was it? You just said it. It was the blood of a king. The blood of the champion I chose to save this land in its time of greatest peril. So was it Marshall's blood, too? King Arthur was also your progeny. Oh, so we're doing fictional Why characters now. Surprised. Yes, he was. But he failed in the end. And for centuries, the land suffered his defeat. I'm not going to overthink this one. Who are your sons? Who are your sons? Why do you bid them farewell now? You are my son. As is William Marshall. Uh, how many have you made? This is madness. How many have you created? Who else? Shakespeare? Isaac Newton? Alfred the Great? Francis Drake? Thomas More? Guy Fawkes? My progeny is scarce, for I rarely feel the urge to protect this land anymore. But yes, one of those you named is your immortal brother. Cool. Maybe you should meet one night. No, 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 maybe. We puppets. So that is all we are to you. Puppets you create to defeat some threat born from a dreaming devil. No. 
You are my sons. I am proud of you. I mourn when you fail. Ah, oh, God, this is just so stupid, this dialogue. He's not giving me any real answers, and the stuff he does explain are so stupidly irrelevant. Speak clearly, then, even though I don't want to talk to you anymore. Speak clearly, then, and answer my last question. Oh, what thank is God, it? last one. Did I defeat the epidemic? Now you found the castle, Jonathan Reed. Only you can answer that. Farewell, my child. Goodbye, good rich. I shall dream about you soon. That's creepy, just get lost. Oh, God. I'm so happy that's over. Before I go into the actual castle, I don't know, there's like a little path here by the water. Uh, maybe I'll find a note. It's just like still my instinct to... No, wait. This is probably the right way I'm going by accident. God damn it. Yeah, because this is red. It's locked, all right. I'm the so sick and tired of that. Look decrepit. Maybe I can find a way to sneak in. I don't care. I'm just so sick and tired of him constantly saying things are locked. God, like the game probably thought it didn't need a fast travel since everything looped in on itself. It needed a fast travel. It really did. All right, we cut through that path. We're at an, uh, like a certain part of the castle, I guess. I don't know. Like, there's no point in like bringing you guys around for this thing. It's nothing really of note. Oh, there's where we were standing. Maybe I can open the door from this end real quick, just just for the hell of it, you know. There we are. Oh no, I can't. Okay. Well, I doubt there really is. Yeah, I can't even go that way. I doubt there's anything more for me to look at or whatever. So. Just look for Lady Ashbury. Who cares about notes or anything like that? Let's just try to figure this out. I cannot enter. <sighs> the lady of the manor isn't expecting visitors. So tired of things being locked. I'm just so tired of it. Uh, I can examine this tombstone. Mary Anglewood, born in White Crest, night 1535 to 1578. Didn't she? Didn't Lady Ashbury say her real name was Mary? So she was born in the 1500s? What's this one say? Robin Anglewood, born 1530-1578. Are these her siblings or something? Well, I think we're now we're going to be inside the castle at least. Maybe it's just my imagination, but I think I smell Elizabeth's perfume. She must be here somewhere. It's locked, all right. All right, that's locked from the other side. Well, someone's been here. We got a fire lit and a nice little piano. Also got some paintings. I cannot enter. All right. Oh, a note here. Old letter. London 4th, August 6th, 1865. Dear Lady Ashbury, thank you for your recent letter and all the good news it contained. I cannot wait to finally meet you when you arrive in London. The garden is beautiful under the summer sky, although I noted your wish to avoid heat and direct sunlight because of your frail health. You're welcome any day. We'll discuss this wonderful idea of yours concerning the foundation of an orphanage for young ladies, inspired by the French Maison Royale de Saint Louis, sadly closed when the French people chose, my God, I can't even write these words down, to cut their king's head off. Such a place, destined to provide a good education to gifted but poor orphan girls, will surely excite my friends here in the city. You can count on me and my influence to help make your project a huge success. Yours ever sincerely, Countess Alexandra Somerset. Now I could Google this name, but I'm not gonna. I'm tired of it at this point. But yeah, that's probably how uh, the orphanage where... Uh, Charlotte was put into. That's kind of how it started, I suppose. This castle is falling apart. And this picture looks very well done. I wonder if Lady Ashbury drew it. Picture of Lady Ashbury in Paris, 1888. That is a very terrible photograph. Just a very awful picture indeed of anybody. Well, there's a downstairs, and then there's a... Yeah, that's also a downstairs, technically. Hey. Portrait of Elizabeth Blackwood by Johannes Vermeer, 1666? Damn, so you were alive during that time. Well, I guess if the 
tombstone is to be believed, then yes. Copy of a letter. Ashbury Castle, 21st September, 1795. Dear Mr. McAlster, as the new legal owner of the Ashbury Estate, I intend to quickly engage in the overdue maintenance and repairs of the walls and the crypt of the castle. Among the few architects I invite to send forth proposals, I was most impressed by your respectable approach concerning renovations on historical buildings and their preservation. I would be glad to meet you at your convenience. My only request would be to speak to you directly and not your assistant. Any evening of next month would be agreeable. You may come to the castle or I can meet you at your office as you prefer. If you agree to come to the castle, I could show you what kind of repairs and modifications I have in mind concerning the crypt, which may need considerable work in reconstruction. Very sincerely, Lady Ashbury. Like most castles, this one has a crypt. And it holds something special inside. I guess that's where Lady Ashbury's hanging out. There's a nice letter down there. I saw it glimmer. Maybe I can get down the old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned way, yeah! That sweet fragrance. Elizabeth's perfume. She was here, and recently. And she also left a note. Uh, let's see. Recent contract. Inverness 18th, April 1907. We're getting closer to the current date. Dear Lady Ashbury, I write to confirm that my men will be at your castle next Monday to begin the new work on the crypt and its access. The plans have been approved, and I'll personally be on site to supervise the installation of the locks and security measures you have requested. I also can assure you that my men have been briefed about the entering the crypt itself of, or the second floor of the castle. I say I'm proud to continue and enhance the work started by, the, by my great-grandfather when employed by your ancestor in 1795. Very sincerely, Angus McAllister. Oh, you're still hiring from the same bloodline, it would seem, girl. What's this? What are these symbols? I can feel a mechanism, but it doesn't work. Ah, uh, I gotta figure something out to get into the crypt, don't I? Here's another switch. I should keep looking. Yeah, alright, that one has a sword. And this one has a flower. Let's keep that in mind. I can feel a mechanism, but it doesn't work. Yeah, I heard you say that the first time. Portrait of Elizabeth and Jacob Blackwood in Versailles in 1788. That was your husband? That was your hair? Damn, times have changed. Another letter. Recent letter. Dunborough Sanatorium, Scotland, 27 July 1909. Dear Lady Ashbury, I thank you for your previous letters and ardent discussions about vampire folklore. It's now obvious we share an opinion concerning scientific and modern approach toward the need for blood and the cure of addiction. I must confess I admire your charitable attitude when I met you at Dunborough Sanatorium, and I am impressed by your kindness when talking with humble and poor patients. I was delighted to read about the position of administer at the Pembroke Hospital you financed since its founding. After a few days of deliberation, I'm happy to accept your offer. It will be, for me, an occasion to get back to the busy streets of London after years of public service in beautiful but far quieter Scotland. I'll be glad to meet you there and discuss with you further about immortality, its advantages and disadvantages, and how to enhance your condition. I look forward to your next meeting. Yours sincerely, Dr. Edward Swansea. Okay, so this is your first communication with Swansea. Portrait of Lady Ashbury by Vincent Van Gogh in 1885. Yeah, damn, she posed for a lot of famous people, didn't she? Looking at the walls here, seeing if anything here would be akin to the puzzle in the other room. Uh, nope. None of these shields have a flower to them, and I can't interact with them. This painting looks suspicious. Which one? Dude, which one? There's so many! You can't just say this painting looks suspicious when I'm walking towards paintings and you're looking- Oh, you gotta look directly up. Uh, can't examine it. Oh, hey! It's someone fighting the Red Queen. I've eh, been there, done that. Another letter, old contract. In Vernus, 11th February, 1807. Okay, further back in the past. Dear, li Dear Miss Ashbury, when last we communicated, you asked for a conveyance of a large coffin from Temple Church, London, to the crypt of the Ashbury Castle in Scotland. 
I'm happy to report... Wait, L to activate census? No, we're going to read this first. I'm happy to report your request has finally been validated. My drivers have been informed that, for security reasons, guards must always protect the coffin. You have hired these individuals who will be waiting for us in London. They also have been informed that under no circumstances should the carriage try to pass a river by boat, but always by road and bridges. For the precious wood and relics inside the coffin cannot be exposed to humidity and moisture. You'll find detailed quote for the entire operation attached to this letter. We are all ready to go to London as soon as payment is full received. Respectfully, Samuel Lewis, independent contractor. Now, I remember amidst everything that this game has forced down my throat, there was some sort of thing about the coffin of William Marshall being moved or something, right? Something's dip- that, that, that's maybe a reference to it? I don't know, but it says now to hit L to activate senses. That doesn't do anything at all. It still says to hit L. Nope, I got my vampire sense. L doesn't do anything. Maybe they mean left click? Nope. You know what? I'm gonna Google that. What the hell could that possibly mean? Yeah, okay, Google's not really helping me right now unless I want to read a whole bunch of links that are super indirect. So, yeah, I'm not gonna do that now. I'll just try to see if I can't figure this out on my own because it might even take a short amount of time. I could just accidentally stumble into the right answer. Oh, the door from the other side. Okay. And the other door from the other side. Alright, I'm assuming that this game is just messing up right now, and it means to hit- means to say V, not L. So let's just keep on our vampire vision and- oh! A sword and a moon are the symbols I should look for. Okay, sword and a moon. I think I saw some down here, actually. Well, this is a shield. That is a sword. That is a flower. Is there, I gotta find a thing that has the moon on it. You know what? Why don't we just tap the sword? One last switch, and all right, let's find the moon. Ah, I think I found it. Yes, the moon. Voila. And I'm assuming it's opening something here. Yes, yes, it did. To the left. So this is the crypt, and we're probably going to find Lady Ashbury down here in hell. Eh. Sorry. Heard some bricks falling? I don't know. What's this? Oh, a whole long ancient tome. Okay. 1217. An angel came to me. Blessed be to God. Michael appeared to me last night in all his glory, shaped in glorious blood to grant me eternal life at the dusk of my life. The apparition was sub so sublime and terrible that I could not help but lower my head and close my eyes. Struck by the divine gift, I fell to the ground, only to awake the next night. You will serve me as you served your king, said the angel before striking me with all his power. You will protect this land through the eons to come. For all who know me, I should now hide and retreat, for they consider me dead. Soon I will leave the company of men to serve my purpose. Blessed be God. 1350. Michael appeared to me last night in my retreat under the temple church and asked me to prepare for battle. The land must be saved. Death is everywhere. The Black Death, an epidemic sent by the devil himself to punish mortals all over the world. My arm is strong. In the name of God, I shall smite the enemies of mankind. England shall prevail. All right, I'm guessing this is Marshall after coming across my vampire not daddy. 1569. It is almost 20 years since my fight started against the devil, and the end is uncertain. From time to time, the plague, the Black Death, reappears in a village, in a town, and each time the vicious minions of hell approach to get their share of the mortal suffering. Vampires, dreadful creatures, I won't let this land collapse until my last breath. I'll serve and protect England. 1578. Tonight in the small village of Hoddenson, I met the most delicate soul I've seen for a long time. She was singing for the dead, singing for those she knew and loved. Those killed by a new plague outbreak without fearing for her own life. 
Her voice moved me, so I chose to let her live. I offered her eternal life as an award for her virtue and most poious attitude. Her name is Elizabeth Englewood. I'm not alone any more. Together we shall praise God in all his glory for the eons to come. 1618. My heart is breaking. My soul is bleeding. Tonight my dear Elizabeth left me. I have taught her all I knew, all she needed to know. Now she must walk her own path through the ages. This is her wish, and I will respect it. Elizabeth Englewood, my sweet daughter, is gone, for she now wants to be known as Elizabeth Blackwood. I made her a promise. If she... Uh, this happens! Duh! I made her a promise. If she ever comes back to Hoddinson, she will find me there. Managing the Bull Inn her parents own before dying. William Marshall shall disappear for a few times, too, now that the Black Death is no more. Until we meet again. I shall be known as William Thorne, waiting for my angel to come back. 1665. The devil is at work again. The Great Plague is back and reaping thousands of lives in London. I must sell the Bull Inn and go there. Once more, William Marshall shall protect the land. 1666. What have I done? I let the devil infect me. God forgive me. The terrifying creature I had to defeat was a demon straight from hell, an abomination of the flesh, a walking apocalypse. I had to trap the dreadful creature in St. Paul's Church and set the building on fire. Without the advice of Michael, I don't know if I could have defeated my enemy. The flames cleansed the city in the demon's presence, but half of London burnt down. Ever since, I have dreamt of red flood, of slaughter and rage. It's like the disaster had tainted my blood, my very soul. For the first time in centuries, I am afraid. I shall crawl back to my retreat and pray to God for mercy for my infected soul. 1667. Elizabeth came to me. She said she felt my pain and rushed to save me. My poor daughter, blinded by rage, intoxicated by the blood of hate, I bit her. She fled, shocked by my betrayal. I laughed and cried as she cursed me. God, I have betrayed you. Have you abandoned me? 1712. My prayers have been unheard. I have found the strength to resist the need for blood, the never-ending hunger. My poor Elizabeth, will you ever forgive me? I've heard you now kill and take pleasure in bloodbath with the new progeny of yours. You're a victim in all of this. What have I done? I swear I will find a way to make amends for what I have done to you. I swear I shall only rest once I know how to appease the blood of hate. 1785. The Brotherhood of St. Paul Stoll finally agreed to meet me in London. They proposed to me inside the new cathedral of St. Paul. I like the wit and so Oh, I read this before, of these men. What a symbol to choose the place where I defeated the disaster, but also the place where I fell. I agree to their proposition. There, in... Oh, this is really frustrating me! There, in the sacred silence of the church, and under the eye of God, they respectfully listened to me. They acknowledged my victory against this evil creature, the Dus Astro, the Eater of Stars, who only wished to spread death and pestilence all around her. Since they acknowledged my will and saved London in 1666, they heard my request, my burning desire to stop the blood of hate. Their primate promised to come back to me with an answer. The primate of St. Paul wrote back to me with just a name, the Tear of Angels. According to him, this ancient artifact could heal anything. Cleanse any blackened soul and purify my blood. Blessed be the Lord, it took me more than a few hundred years to find a cure for my blood of hate. But I may have finally found it. Soon the rage shall end. Soon I may repair the wrong I did and cleanse my failures. Now all I need to do is retrieve the necessary ingredients to create the artifact. Blood of the purest heart mixed with the blood of the king. To find such rare ingredients is not what worries me most. For time is on my side. It's the last part that worries me. Pure essence of garlic. I'm afraid it will literally hurt like hell when I drink the antidote. But if that's the price to pay to cleanse my soul and correct my mistakes, 
I am ready to endure the excruciating pain. 1786. I finally managed to gather all the ingredients needed to concoct the tear of angels. Blood of the purest heart for the fortitude. Blood of a king for courage. Garlic essence for the painful cleansing. After months of impatience, almost made mad by hunger, I waited again and again until finally Elizabeth cautiously came to me. As promised, I had chained myself to be sure I would not attack her again. I did not recognize my sweet daughter at first, for she was only Lady Blackwood now, the dreadful mistress of the dark, who took delight in slaughter and carnage in France. She smirked as I apologized and cried for what I inflicted to her. She shouted at me when I tried to explain to her that my bite had infected her, had given her the blood of hate, now burning her veins and her soul. I told her I had found a cure, and that I had managed to create one dose of antidote. I gave it to her to give her back her previous peaceful life. Ugh, this is frustrating me! I have no control over this! Why does this happen? In exchange, I only asked her to take care of me, for I intended to be locked down in my tomb, changed if necessary, to impeach me from feeding on any mortal or immortal. She reluctantly took the tear of angels and left. I hope to see her again soon, cured and at peace. 1794. She came back to me finally, cured, healthy, joyful, my Elizabeth. She told me she had drunk the antidote about a year ago in France, after witnessing and taking part in the massacre of an entire orphanage caused by the blood of hate. That's when the Lady Blackwood died, she said. She promised she would take care of me now. That's all I ask as I repent for all the murdered souls caused by my negligence of more than a hundred years. 1795. My dearest daughter came back last week to tell me the good news. She had recently bought a castle in Scotland. She will soon finance the renovation of the castle crypt to provide me a new retreat, far from temptation, far from noisy, crowded cities. I can't wait to embrace the solitude. Find the peace I need to refrain from killing. God, please give me the strength to resist the urges during the journey from London to my domain. Before I leave, I should give copy of these memoirs to the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole, without most shameful and sensible information, of course. Soon I shall have to leave London to pursue a penance. There I shall find peace at last with the support of my resurrected Elizabeth. All right, but hey, that's now we know how, technically how old Lady Ashbury is. That's a good thing to know. And apparently her maker's William Marshall. So, uh, yeah. Suck it, Redgrave. I'm just looking side to side. Maybe there's another note. Uh, highly doubt it. All right, I think down here we Don't confront Lady so Ashbury. You have nothing to be afraid of. Shall we abandon this then? Shall we lower our heads? No. No. You taught me that. He looks blue. Blood is approaching. Old but young. How strange. Shall I drink it? Smite it? No, father. He is a friend. Please, rest. I'll take care of it. Caution, Elizabeth. Deceit runs through these veins. I Talking about yours father. or mine? What took you so long, Jonathan? Traffic. Is this really him? Yes. This is William Marshall. First Earl of Pembroke, servant of five mortal kings, former regent and savior of England. The greatest knight who ever lived, according to some. And you called him father? For he gave me eternal life, and much more. I have so many questions, Elizabeth. Oh, we gotta ask her things, don't we? You always had questions, Doctor. Now that I stand before you both, in this vault, I know not where to begin. We still have a few minutes left. 
God damn it. Like, do we really need to ask her, where are we? Why did we flee? Those things are just so obvious. Why pay the voice actors to say these lines? We're gonna ask them all, though. Where are we? Where are we? What is this place? This is the Ashbury Estate. I inherited the title when I purchased the castle. And this is your retreat. Is this your retreat? Something of a secret place? It's more of a sanctuary, really. This is where I take care of my father. Ever since he became unwell. Yeah, something about the blood of wrath or whatever. Someone can find you here. Are you not afraid someone might discover you here? It's not that hard to find. Do not assume that I would hesitate to silence anyone who tried to reveal my secret. Fortunately, it has rarely come to that. I believe that you would kill for this. Yeah, why, why, why flee here? Why did you here? flee here? When you told me I was the healthy carrier, I had nowhere else to go. You mean you had to return to the real source of this scourge? Yes. To end it, once and for all. You gotta kill your dad? Will you ever go back to London? Will you go back to London? No, Jonathan. I do not intend to. And what of your daughter? Charlotte is a strong, independent woman who's about to come into money. I took care of everything. Now it's time for her to shape her future. Alright, so yeah, you're going to die here and Charlotte will inherit your money. Yeah, London saved. I have destroyed the disaster, this creature that Harriet Jones had become. The epidemic is no more, and London will recover. In time. Yes. You did well, Jonathan. You truly saved the city. Yes, we did. Despite all obstacles. I'm truly convinced we did it together, Elizabeth. I cannot bear knowing I was the cause of all this. Through the use of my own blood. No. This catastrophe was the result of unethical experimentation. And the will of a creature so inexplicably evil, she exceeds all the terrible wonders I have seen since my death. But it was my blood. Just a perfect blood. storm. My corrupted blood of hate. The poisoned blood of my father. A healthy carrier. That's all I am. More to talk. There's no need for this. I'm sorry. I'll just shut up and we'll just go through it all. Why are you hiding William Marshall here? How could I not take care of him? He sacrificed himself by giving me the only dose of antidote he had. And he couldn't make any more? He gave you the antidote? Yes. And in doing so, he knew he'd have to be confined here. And yet he volunteered. That's how great a man William Marshall was, and still is. What do you do for him? I visit him as often as possible. I paint the landscapes he will never see again. I feed him with my blood. You feed him? You barely sustain yourself on the weak blood of the dying, yet you give him your blood? After he saved me from the blood rage, I swore I would never kill to feed. He said the same. Ah, sure. He's dangerous. Is he dangerous? What do you think? He is a thirsty Ekon, who has not fed in centuries. An elder vampire, driven by an urge to kill and spread the blood of hate. No redemption, then. And yet he thinks he has been offered immortality by the angels to protect the feeble and to smite the unholy. Chances are it was just our not daddy vampire. Can he communicate? Yes. Sometimes he even seems like the noble knight who saved and raised me. But you know, the malice never fully leaves his eyes. Well, we could probably make another antidote, couldn't we? We could cure him. It's... Too late. The blood of hate has run for too long. The antidote would not work on him. Could at least try. try. Oh, he did try. Believe me, I tried. All right. William Marshall infected you. He is the true original carrier. Yes. But he saved me 
by sacrificing himself. Saved you? How? The we know this already. Angels. The cleansing of impure blood by an older, more powerful blood. It worked on me, did it not? Yes. Blood is the definitive key to our species. Scowls, cleansing, lineage. Do you really think it worked? It has, Jonathan. I was nothing but a beast who took pleasure in slaughter. I roamed across Europe, reaping my bloody crop. It was the blood of hate. But my father's antidote cured me. My God. Who are you, really? Who are you, really? How could I answer that? I went through many lives and identities to reach this day. To you, I am Elizabeth Ashbury. And that's all I wish to be. Fair. I need to know more. I want to know who you really are, where you were born, where you lived. I was born Elizabeth Samantha Mary Englewood in 1551 in Hertfordshire. My parents owned a pub in Hoddesdon. Are you satisfied? Sure, I am. How did you meet William Marshall? He was an Econ for centuries when he found me. He saved me from certain death by making me his progeny. Why did he choose you? You should ask him that. Oh god, I don't want to have to talk to him either. Did you ever blame him? Not even when he was infected and bit me. He is my father. He raised me. He taught me how to behave. What about us? What do you mean? You know my feelings towards you, Elizabeth. But you left without a word. So I'm worried about your feelings towards me. I love you, Jonathan. Oh, we're out of the friend zone at least. I've loved you since the moment I saw you rescue poor Mr. Hampton in that filthy slaughterhouse. Forgetting the danger as you turned your back. Like the newborn fool you were. You should have told me. No, Jonathan. The William Marshall myth lies at the heart of so many hostile plans. I could not risk jeopardizing his safety. So why did you come here? You knew I would follow you. I can't let you go. Because I know now the blood of hate is still in my veins. No one but I can put an end to this tragedy. I can help you. You can trust me, Elizabeth. I know, Jonathan. You have been the most loyal ally these last few weeks. But this is my duty. Would I don't think your dad has bleeped once throughout this whole conversation. I have so many questions for him. Go on, Jonathan. But be careful. <sighs> this game just doesn't know when to shut up. Yes, so William. My god, you really are William Marshall. You served Richard the Lionheart and his brother, King John. It is such a privilege to meet you. I did in my day. Come closer if you want to speak, for my hearing isn't what it used to be. I think your hearing is fine. Yeah, don't get near him, dude. What is it you want, then? Yeah, do not get anywhere near this guy, man. He will so bite you. Tear of Angels. I found your research on the antidote. The Tears of the Angels. What ingredients did you use? Once I understood what the ingredients were, I used the tears of King Richard and the pure blood of the valiant Bodicea. I don't know who that person is. King Richard? And Bodicea? How did you find such relics? It took me many years to locate their hiding place. Then I had to learn the formula. If I recall, it belonged to an ancient brotherhood. The Order of St. Paul, I believe. We read about this already. Of course we already know that it worked. And did it work? Yes. The tears cleansed my poor Elizabeth's blackened heart. It was such a blessing to see her smile again. 
And the disaster. I found and defeated the disaster that was threatening to smite London. You should know that the city is safe for now, Sir William. Then may I call you brother? Did you resist its poison? Even a scratch from a beast so evil could endanger you and all those you care for. You also defeated one in 1666. Who was it? She was a malicious witch who spread plague throughout the city with her army of rats. She had been hiding in a bakery in Pudding Lane for months when I finally found her. How did you defeat it? We fought for hours. In the end, I had to lock her in St. Paul's Cathedral and burn the building down. I wanted to be sure she was destroyed. I wonder if he went back to make sure there was a corpse. The blood of hate. How does it affect you? Do you feel it now? The blood of hate? Yes. Nothing more than a sneeze, really. A sneeze held for so long, you could blow a fortress down if you released it. Ah, <sighs> can we talk about vampires? I would like to ask you about vampires. Vampires? What about them? Considering your experience, please tell me what you know. They are terrible creatures. I have seen and fought many in my time. Foul temptresses with sharp claws and shrieking beaks. I have never seen such a creature. What are you talking about? Of course you've never seen a creature like them. Vampires are deadly, swift and implacable. I guess the definition of vampires was different back then. Where did you encounter such creatures? The last time I saw one was in a Celtic temple near Salisbury. A terrible and godforsaken place full of ghosts and pestilence. Ah, uh, please tell me we don't have to go there. Can we speak about the Morrigan? The Red Queen? What of her? You met her, did you not? Just once. But she never ceased to sing to me. I love her song. It is a song of blood and war. I only wish she would sometimes let me rest. No, that's just the blood of hate in ya. Do you know who she is? I don't want to discuss this in front of my sweet Elizabeth. Why? For a time, she too could hear the red song. The steps she danced to its melody brought pain upon the world. Ah, fair enough. Do you remember Murden, your maker? Only God is my maker, for he created everything on this earth. He blessed me with eternal life through his archangel, Michael. But yeah, we Murden, read about that. Michael is a vampire. He made you a blood-sucking creature of the night. Blood, yes. I used to drink it from the throats of the unworthy. Then I was punished for my deceit. During my penance, I rely entirely upon my sweet Elizabeth. And how'd she get infected? Tell me about Elizabeth. How was she infected? I do not wish to discuss it. Please okay. I need to know what the blood of hate is. How is it transmitted? After defeating the disaster in St. Paul's Cathedral, I returned to my retreat, infected. This is where my sweet Elizabeth found me, for she heard my pain from across the sea. Where is this retreat you mentioned? In London, under Temple Church. Beneath my empty tomb, I always love to sleep there while listening to the bell above. What happened then? The blood of hate had twisted me into a rage-filled man. I attacked my progeny and infected her too. Forgive me, Elizabeth. I failed you. You bit her again? Is that how she was infected with the disaster's blood? I think I understand now. Elizabeth, it was explained already. And I fell to my knees, begging for forgiveness. 
I swore I would find a way to make things right. This stuff was already explained to us. Why does the game feel the need to constantly repeat itself? How did you meet Elizabeth? Because we already I heard this too. I had awakened to protect the land from a new plague. I heard her sing for her dead family. Singing for her death to come. I chose to save her. When was that? It was so long ago. A few years after Elizabeth of England and Catherine of France established their alliance against Spain. What did you do? I raised her as my progeny. After she left to see the world, I rebuilt her deceased parents' inn. Owned it as William Thorne for a time. Those were good years. Did you really sacrifice yourself to save her? That was the only righteous path. The blood of hate made me betray her. I am at peace here. I can think about what I've done and how I failed. Do you not want to be cured? No. This hunger is mine. I would feel empty without it. It has been part of me for so long. All I want is quiet. Silence. Uh, it's probably a code for death. You agreed to be confined here then? Yes. Once I was sure she was cured, I asked to be locked down here. I deserve it. The world needs it. Self-sacrificing, aren't you? We could set you free. Let you out. Isn't that what you want? I pray for the day I'll see the sky again. I have all but forgotten its colors. I could walk and do so many things beneath the stars. But I doubt it would be wise to release me. Then will you stay here and repent? Elizabeth told me it will not be long now. I cannot wait to feel the sweet caress of her hand on my cheek after so long as she releases me. Yep, you're gonna die. All right, Elizabeth, let's get to Has it. Has the time come? Yes, Father. Why not unleash me then? To see the sky a final time. You already are the sky and all its stars. I'm not defeated, for I welcome the sword you bear, for it is mine. You were never defeated, my lord. I gotta say, this kind of takes away the whole like dialogue I just did for like 10 15 minutes, kind of takes away the intensity of this. <laughs> yeah, but nonetheless, it's perfectly well, gruesome. <laughs> and to you also, Jonathan. What do you mean? Oh, come on, we both saw this one I coming. I understand what I've become. This healthy carrier, as you put it. The flames will purify the poison that runs in my veins. No. Okay, maybe fire's not the way to do it. To happen. Like, I am death, Jonathan. We, we can just use the sword. Wherever I go, I can't stand it. Look, we'll just use the sword I on you. I am Doctor Jonathan Reed, champion of Murden, chosen to save England from the vampire epidemic. I could cure you. What do you mean? We are creatures of blood, Elizabeth. Everything about us is in our blood. With time, I could perfect the antidote William Marshall gave you. Trust me, for time is on our side. I mean, I'd give it a shot. <sighs> that is a risk I cannot take. Okay. I won't bring another such disaster into this world. Elizabeth, no. Trust me. I can save you. He could. Just How give could it a shot. I trust you, Jonathan. How could I take such a chance? I'll stay here with you then, as long as we must until I find a cure. You have no idea what you're talking about, Jonathan. 
Despite his madness, William was strong enough to start the centuries. I doubt we can do the same. That's where you're wrong, Elizabeth. Since I murdered my poor Mary after my rebirth, I vowed to never take a life again. And We've I've done that so many times. I guess pre guards don't sure count. I have the strength of character. I'm not like William. I'm not like you. Let me teach you then. Come with me, my love. Oh, Jonathan, if only this could be true, but I really don't know. We'll run away. Go to the deepest forests, the highest mountains. Untouched by man, we'll hide in solitude until I find a cure. Do you trust me then? Until the end of the world, my love. I guess this is the good ending if you don't kill anybody. Or you play it on story mode like I did. One prayer for the summoned called by this song. Child born from darkness whose path he must find. Now the song is sung and your path chosen. England is safe for you have prevailed. Oh, they're going to New York. Peace duly earned for the centuries yet to come. And they will come. I bid thee farewell, my champion, bittersweet. My queen sleeps once again, and I'll soon join her slumber. Until alas, she rises, woken by the hunger never fed. So I guess the good ending is, uh, well, the achievement, a taste for blood. Oh, yep, yep. Okay, so yeah, we got the good ending. Yay! Yay! Okay, I definitely have so many gripes right now, but I will hold that off until the end of the credits. Well, Vampire. I gotta say, it had a great start. I really enjoyed the first couple hours of it. Sometime around hour 10 or 12, though, it really gets on you the fact that the dialogues are constantly repeating themselves. Characters are constantly re-saying the same things over and over again, just in different ways. And there's so many characters, too. The game either had to cut the amount of characters in half, or cut the amount of times they- like, the dialogues they had in half. Like, they didn't have to all tell you, current situation in London, what do you think about this, what do you think about that? I know these characters existed so you could decide whether or not you wanted to kill them and drink their blood for a power boost. If that's the case, keep their dialogues specifically specific to them. Don't ask them about the broader things about London. Simplify it as much as you can when you have that many characters and the game already has an emphasis on dialogue and listening. It was just too much. Like, I was fine with the amount of notes I had to read, that was a, fi that was a good amount. The dialogue was just way too much. It really just had to cut itself back a bit. And I do kind of feel bad ripping into the game like this because you could tell this was somebody's baby. They really didn't want to peel it back at all. And I, I do get that. When I make a video, I know I'm not a professor or anything, or I make a best of moments, I struggle to cut things back, and even when I'm done, I feel like, ah, oh, I should have cut that instead and left that in. Like, it it can be a struggle when you're making something, and it can be really hard to cut something out because you feel like it's important. It's difficult, and when you're done, and even when all is said and done, you can look back on it and think, nah, I could have done that differently. Because... I'm a little shy to say this. I know I said a while ago, you know, I was cringe and I read a lot of poetry and all that stuff and I was super deep. I wrote a lot of poetry too. And I wrote stories and I still write to this day. Nothing's published. Don't even bother asking that. And I get it. It's really hard to cut things when you write something down. Because you feel like it's all important. It's all in your mind. It's all part of the story. Readers want to know this. They need to know this. How are they going to get it if they don't if you don't have this written down? Truth be told, when I look back at some of the stuff I I wrote, I think, yeah, no. That's not necessary. This can be cut. That doesn't need to be there. This entire portion doesn't even need to exist. This was already explained there. That doesn't need to be explained at all. This could be saved for another thing. Like 
You look at it years later, of course, and your objective eye will change, but... It's hard to change it in the now, and it has to be especially hard with a whole team behind it. This was just a case, though, where there should have been more people to cut it back, though. I get it was hard. I totally get that it's hard to do that to something you love, something you work hard on. But it had to be done for something like this. It was a real slog to get through the last 15 hours of this game, I'd say. Maybe more. I definitely didn't touch in everything. But it's not worth going back to replay it because the save functionality... Mm, come on, seriously? You, you, didn't, you had to do an autosave thing and no automatic, no manual save. And the fact that there is no fast travel in such a big, fast world. That wasn't a thought. I mean, I would have to say that this world is comparable to the Batman Arkham City game. But in Arkham City, Batman had a grapple. So if I didn't want to walk a direct way, I had a fast way to get to the location I wanted to go to. There's no such thing in this game. It doesn't exist. And in Batman Blackade Origins, which is also a similar, similar size game, they had a fast travel and the grapple gun. I know I'm not expecting this game to have a Batmobile and a grappling gun. You could just do the Far Cry method, where every single uh, checkpoint or tower, whatever it is, depending on which game you get, you get to fast travel to. Just do that. They, they never rationalize how your character is able to get there in just a couple seconds who's just a normal human. You don't have to rationalize that to a player. If you just tell me that, hey, you want to get to the other side of the map? Sure. <laughs> Gamers will not question it, man. We're totally cool with accepting a couple of faults in reality so we can play a video game. Because at the end of the day, it's a video game. We're willing to suspend our disbelief to make the gameplay easier on us. Alright, I think I got my rant out there, but I I know it doesn't really matter what I say because it's not like the people who made this game are ever going to see this. And I don't want them to think that I hated the game. If anyone out there, if you did work on this game, I don't hate Vampire. It had a lot of great things to it that I did enjoy. That opening scene, the lore was very much in depth. There were Because of the dialogue, it made it very hard for me to keep up or distinguish what is or what wasn't important. Oh god, I just... I hate being mean, like... This is not Dead Space 3, is what I'm saying. Dead Space 3 is... Oh, that was a bad game. This is not a bad game. No. I wouldn't call it a good game, either. Kinda hard to call it an... Yeah, you know what? I'd call it an okay game. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just... Okay. <sighs> but on that note, folks... We're gonna end Vampire here. So... If you guys enjoy what you're watching, hit subscribe. If you want to keep up to date with any future stories that I play, ring that bell. And... Thank you all so much for watching. Later!